Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another Hard Count podcast. And as always on Saturdays, me and Into Sports are we going over our week seven best bets. So let's get right into it. Evan, you want to give us your first pick? Yep, first pick. I'm going to the biggest game of the week. The Steelers get one and a half okay. points traveling down to Tennessee. And I'm going to say something that might surprise people. The Titans have only played one good game. Their first three games of the season, they played three bad teams. That's Denver, Jacksonville, and Minnesota. First three games. Those teams have a combined 4-13 and 13 record. And Tennessee won those three games by a total of six points. And yes, I know they beat Buffalo handily, but Buffalo was on the road. Buffalo wasn't even sure if they were going to play that game. They didn't know that if they had to play the Bills on a Tuesday night or the Chiefs on a Thursday night. It was a scheduling disaster for the Bills uh, because Tennessee had you know some positive cases. That's why that game was pushed back and in jeopardy. But then last week, the Titans beat the 1-5 Texans in overtime at home. They had to come back in the final six seconds to mm-hmm. even get to overtime. So I think the Titans are a little overvalued here. They also lost their star left tackle, Taylor Lewan, and they're going to face the team with the most quarterback pressures this year, the Pittsburgh Steelers. And that's Steelers front, only allowing 66 yards per game on the ground, which is second best. They're number one in rush defense, DVOA, by a mile. This is a big and physical front seven with Pittsburgh. And Tennessee needs that run game to get going to then use their play action in passing game. So it's only going to be more difficult for Tennessee to get that going without their best linemen. And finally, Tennessee, fifth worst passing defense in terms of yards allowed. And Pittsburgh gets a good receiver, Deontay Johnson, back. I like the Steelers to win 26-24, to pulling off the upset. Okay. Yeah, we talked about this game on our Pick'em uh, podcast a couple days ago, and we both picked the Steelers. I like that bet quite a bit. Um, should be a fun game, though. And so, let's get in my first bet, best bet of the week. It is Green Bay minus 3.5 at Houston is my favorite bet of the week. And this number to me seems too small. It seems like an overreaction to Houston playing well last week against Tennessee and an overreaction to what we saw on national TV when the Packers got destroyed by the Buccaneers. And... Aaron Rodgers, this Packers offense are going to be pissed off. They're going to be want to come out and prove that they're still one of the best teams in the league, which I do believe they are. And this, there's a big reason for them in this game to pack on points against Houston. There's a big reason to come out and with firing. And part of the reason that the Packers struggle a little, a little bit more against the Buccaneers was because they were their defense is so good. They were able to get consistent pressure on Aaron Rodgers and that offense. That offense was never really able to get in its rhythm that we'd seen it get in for those first four weeks. And the weeks before that, the Packers had torn apart four bad defenses in a row, putting up an average of 38 points per game in that span of time. Houston is a bad defense. Aaron Rodgers is going to be comfortable all game long. Houston's front seven is not elite like Tampa Bay's, and they're not going to be able to get pressure on Aaron Rodgers nearly as much. So Aaron Rodgers is going to get get comfortable in that offense, and we saw how dangerous that was. 38 points per game in those first four games. So... Houston's secondary is not great either, and that's and one thing to point out, I've noticed with Devontae Adams, is that when he is not guarded by an elite number one corner, he is very, very good. He does struggle a little bit more when he's able to be pressed by a guy that's one of the best corners in the league. Obviously, that's for all receivers, but especially Devontae Adams. Houston does not have that number one lockdown corner, so I can expect a big game from him this week. Houston is bottom seven in points allowed per game, and this Packers offense is one of the most explosive teams in the league right now. I did like what I saw from Deshaun Watson's Texans, but give me a pissed off Aaron Rodgers and Packers team looking for revenge all day at minus three and a half. Yeah, I think whenever you can get the greatest quarterback of all time motivated, that's a pretty good selection. (laughs) I'm going to go with Detroit here, heading to Atlanta. Two and a half point underdogs, Detroit. And this is not a complicated handicap. The line says Atlanta is about a point and a half better on a neutral field. They're favored by two and a half. They're at home. I disagree. The Lions are better in yards per play differential. They have a better DVOA, better point differential. It's very simple. They're better. All of my major metrics in handicapping 
lean to Detroit. And the, they're two and three. They have some hope in their in their season. The lot or the Falcons are just one in five, and their season is essentially over. Mm-hmm. And there's been trade speculations with Matt Ryan and Julio Jones. They're two best players. And the owner hasn't even squashed those rumors. And now back to the Lions. This offense has been a lot better with star receiver Kenny Galladay. I think he actually might get into the end zone multiple times in this game. I'll take the Lions to win a high-scoring affair 30-27. to Okay, I like that one too. We both picked the Lions on our podcast. So, should be a fun game. Two teams that aren't very good, but I think it is going to be an interesting game to watch for sure. I like that bet. So let's get into my second bet. Seattle at Arizona. I'm taking Arizona plus three and a half in this game. And this may seem like a little bit of a weird bet. Arizona only getting three and a half against Seattle off a bye. And if you watched our pick'em video on Thursday, you will know that I picked Arizona in an upset game in this game. It was my upset of the week. And last week we saw Arizona put up 38 points against a very bad Cowboys defense. But it was a good game for that Arizona offense despite Kyler Murray not playing too well. And why should I bring up last week, though, against a very bad Cowboys defense? It was a bad Cowboys defense. But this Seahawks defense is also one of the worst in the NFL. The Seahawks have allowed the third most yards per play this season and have one of the worst secondaries in the NFL. So I expect a bounce back game from Kyler Murray that this Arizona offense, and I expect them to have a very successful day. And not to mention, Evan and I have mentioned this handicap a few times in the, in the past few weeks. Arizona gets a matchup advantage here. Arizona is a dink and dunk football team with Cliff Kingsbury. They love to throw the ball underneath to guys like DeAndre Hopkins. Meanwhile, Seattle plays the cover three defense, which takes away big plays, but lets up some more of those underneath completions. Arizona wants to get those underneath completions. I expect a huge day from one of the best wide receivers in the NFL and DeAndre Hopkins. As he's one of the best route runners, he's going to get those underneath completions all day. And and last year, we saw Arizona upset Seattle, and I think that matchup advantage could have been a big part of it. I think that Seattle by, by the market is slightly out, overvalued by the offense. Yes, uh, by the market. Yes, the offense is good, but as shown by Minnesota, you can take them out of their game a little bit on offense and they can struggle. And not to mention Pete Carroll as a head coach has a losing record ATS off of a bye. And I'm not saying I'm guaranteeing a Arizona win here, but in a division game, I see this game be, being decided by less than a field goal. So give me Arizona plus three and a half all day. Yeah, I like that because of the matchup advantage and that peach cobbler stat is a little surprising. Yeah. Under 500 ATS off a bye. Um, You'd think a good coach would be great off a bye, but not in this case. Yep. My third pick, I'm going to the Monday night game, taking another road underdog. I like the Bears, six-point underdogs uh, to the Rams. And yes, Chicago is not as good as their 5-1 record. But they're not five points worse than the four and two Rams. DVOA, this is you know an analytics ranking trusted by most wise guys. Bears, 14th best team, Rams, 9th best team. The gap isn't very big. And the Rams have four wins on the season. And all of them have come against the NFC least. The Cowboys, the Eagles, the Giants, the Washington football team all bad teams Rams haven't beat a good team and the two times they've played above average teams 0-2 straight up 0-2 against the spread now the Bears very good front seven they're 11th in rush defense DVOA and I think the Rams need that run game to get going to open it up for Jared Goff in the play action passing game but I don't think they'll be able to establish that run to open up the play action and the year they, the Rams went to the Super Bowl, Todd Gurley had a ton of rushing yards. That opens up the offense for Jared Goff. He had a 64 QBR that year. Then last year, uh, Gurley's yards were nearly cut in half. They underperform, they miss the playoffs, and Goff goes down to a 50 QBR. Goff needs that run game to run that play action. And the last time the Rams played the Bears in the Rams Super Bowl year, Jared Goff, four interceptions, three sacks taken, and an 11 QBR. He was affected heavily by Khalil Mack in this front seven. The Bears won that game 15 to six. And that was a Rams team that averaged 31 points per game that year. 
The Bears completely shut them down, and I expect another low-scoring slugfest on Monday night where points become a premium. I'll take the Rams to win the game 23-20, to but the Bears cover. Okay, I like that one. I considered it myself. Um, gotta love that Bears defense. It's a very good defense, and maybe the Rams are a little bit overvalued. And so let's move on to my final pick, and it is Cleveland minus three at Cincinnati. And it's kind of funny because I just made a video on Evan's channel yesterday about the Browns basically telling you how bad they are. But one of my major points in that video was that the Browns are a team that will beat up on the bad teams and struggle against the good ones. The Bengals are a bad team. As I said in that video, the Browns have averaged 39 points per game against opponents that do not have top 10 defenses. And that's because Baker is comfortable. This offense gets in a rhythm and Cincinnati is going to allow this to happen. They've allowed the ninth most yards per play this season. And I think this is a little bit of an overreaction to last week as well. I do not think Cleveland is any worse than they were just a week ago. And I think they're just, it was just proving a lot of what we already thought they were. And Cincinnati, on the other hand, kept pace with the Colts for a good part of that game, but blew that big lead, maybe giving us some false hope in Cincinnati. And what else do we know about the Bengals and the Browns? The, the Bengals have one of the worst pass blocking offensive lines in the NFL. And when opponents can get pressure, it makes it very tough for rookie quarterback Joe Burrow. We've seen that multiple times, especially in that Ravens game a couple weeks ago where Joe Burrow on that offense could not get anything going. The Browns can get that pressure. Miles Garrett is going to be a nightmare all game for the Bengals. It's going to be a big struggle for them. So I expect this offense to really struggle. And now we have seen these two teams play before earlier this season. Cleveland won by five, but Cincinnati did cover the six point spread with a backdoor cover touchdown to Tyler Boyd. Otherwise, Cleveland had complete control over the game. So this line of three makes a backdoor cover much less likely. It's a much smaller gap. So when you're laying a ton of points, backdoor covers is something you really got to worry about. When it's only three, not nearly as much. I expect the Browns to be up all game, going to handily beat the Bengals. Give me the Browns minus three all day. All right. Those were our week seven best bets. Thanks so much for being on the podcast, Evan. Yep. Anytime. See you next week. Yep. As always, until next time, peace.